Hello friends, welcome to this video on MicroStrategy documents. In this video, we'll be creating a, do a document. So let's get started. We have to go to our MicroStrategy developer. Go to public objects, right click and create a new document. There will be two options under the general tab and dashboards. In earlier videos, we have seen how to create a dashboard from this dashboard tab. So in this, we don't have to go to the dashboard tab. We have to be in general tab and click on this blank document or any template which we want. We are going to choose the blank template here. It will ask us to select a report at the data set. So we can select the reports from our folders. So the document opens in this way. We have this document structure which will contain the page header document header detail header detail detail footer document footer and page footer by default the screen seems similar to our dashboard but these are the default things which we will be getting here we can go to the data tab and there also we can add a data set for adding additional data set we can use this option so for this dashboard we have two data sets the category and customer Category contains category, subcategory, month, year, day, and the revenue, the cost, price, the unit sold, etc. Customer contains the customer, customer state, and the revenues, various revenues. Next thing we'll do is go to the format tab, go to document properties. Under advanced, we have the option so single tab for the layout so this way we are going to check so we'll get this layout we can right click on this and rename it as per our need we can click on this plus symbol to add additional layouts and clicking on the plus symbol we get this option to add a document or a dashboard again here I have added two layouts one for category other for customer this is the document structure which we are going to create. We'll have a page header which will have the text box for the heading. There will be another text box which will show other run date. There will be a line to separate these two. Then there will be a text box which will show as a page number. Another text box to show as a prompt name. This will be customized name. And the other one which will have the prompt details. The layout header will have a text box which will have the subcategory attribute. Category header will have a grid that is a category grid which we have. Detail header is going to have three text for the month, year and revenue. These are customized text and again the detail will have the month, year and revenue. These are the, our attributes. So first we can enter a text box. Here we have that option. This is a text box. Here I'm going to give the title that is the heading for this document. We have several options here for formatting as well as properties. We can manage them. Now this is our category view. That is the text which is created. Next, we'll go to the insert menu. Under auto text, we are going to enter the date and time. So this will come here as date and time with an ampersand symbol. Here, I'm entering text run date. That is a customized text before the date and time which is displayed. When we right click on this, we also have several properties as well as the format options available for this auto text as well. Here I have formatted it without uh, with the background and the borders etc and the font and color. Next thing I am going to the insert menu to insert a line. This is where the line is being dropped and created. Again in the auto text I am going to enter the page number. Next. We are going to enter a prompt name. This will be like I want to display the 
prompt the customer min age. This is a customized statement I am writing under the normal text box. For auto text, we are going to select the prompt details. So when we click on that prompt detail, we get this ampersand prompt details automatically here in the text box. We have several prompts here. So you can see this is a number that is a name and this is the value which is being entered. So in this our scope is to get only this. There are two prompts. I want to get only the first one and I want to display 16. That is the input which user is giving. So for that, I just change it to prompt one instead of prompt details given an ampersand at the front and back. For this prompt, we also have this properties and the formatting options. We can go to the properties under report details property. There is a format here. We can see several options available for report details, prompt details, miscellaneous, etc. For this. There is an option if you want to include the prompt titles. I don't want to include the prompt title. I just want to include the prompt value. So I'll select it from the drop down as no. Replacement string for unanswered prompts where we have some customized answers like not answered and all. Show attribute name for attribute element prompts. It also has several options. Yes, no. Do we want to include the unused prompts? Here we can manage that. So I have formatted it and I have given a name as text prompt 2. This is how it displays. This is our category, that is the header, this is our end date, this is our page number and this is our customer main age text and this is the prompt value that is 16. Next thing we are going to add the category attribute to group by or page by. The moment we do that we see a category header and a category footer gets created. Other thing which we are going to do is drag the subcategory attribute into the layout header. Here if we see in web we have this category which will show us the various categories which we added in our page by. Here we have the subcategory that's showing us art and architecture. Next thing under the category header, we are going to pull this entire grid. So this grid category with the attributes and metrics gets here into the grid. If we go to our web and see, if we select the category as books, we get one single grid which will show as books. If we select all categories, we get multiple grids for books, electronics, movies and music which are the elements for category. Now we are going to enter again a text box. Here we are going to enter the text box in the detail header. It will contain month, year and revenue. These are the customized text values which we are entering in the detail header. Next we'll go to detail and here we will drag the category, sorry, month, year and revenue. So we are going to drag the revenue Your VC month has been dragged. Month, year, and average revenue. So, the important thing to note here the month and year we are selecting from the first data set, and average revenue per customer we are selecting from the second data set. If we insert a grid, then for the grid we have already seen in our previous videos, we can enter the data only from a single data set in the grid. To get the data from multiple data sets, we are using here the text boxes. This is how it's going to appear, the detail header and the detail. I have reduced the spaces here and aligned them and given some background color. In web, we can see this appears like this. Again, for the grid, which we had in our previous section, here of the width mode I keep as fixed. We have several properties and the general layout, grid, wizard, and advanced which we can manage as per our need. 
this is our view in the web where we have our category and customer these are two layouts this is our page by category our category header this is our run date the customized text along with the date it shows when it was run this is our page number this is a customer mean age which shows the minimum age from the prompt value which the user selects this is our subcategory this is our grid which i have just made it fixed to be visible because it had a scroll bar a bottom of the grid we have the detail which shows the month name year and revenue and below that we have the values for them thank you for watching